here we have an actuator. I've been requested to do an actuator end to tell you wire them up. So I'm now going to try and show you without too many mistakes in fumbling my words. Okay, what we've actually got on this one, we've got two micro switches sitting over here. One for each end. Okay, if you want to go one way, one will go the other way. You've also got a little bead switch, which is this bit here, with with some uh, a sensor on there going to the motor. Okay, don't worry about that. That's not that important. You've got five connections coming in. Okay, or five connections on a on a strip. Uh, what you've actually got two of the two of the, the these two at this end. Uh, one goes off to the motor. One goes off to the switch. Okay. Uh, and they, I think they share the actual switch on which end, that's the way they're actually wired, it's quite a neat little way of doing it. The other motor wire goes to this one, okay, so actually that goes through the switch, you can see that in sort of a way. I won't try and battle it too much, but these two here are where your positive and negative go on, on that side. The other ones you're leaving well alone. Now, the way these work... There is actually a plastic gear, a little plastic cam gear. You can see that's loose a little bit from there. But on this on this gear, there's two wheels held by a screw. I don't know if you can see that at all. I'll try and get as close as I can to it. As, as the actual motor turns one way, on one polarity, one of these little cams, as you can see on this one, goes up to the little micro switch and switches it and switches the motor off. So that, that's your fail safe to the end of the actual... Uh, the movement on one direction. Then when you reverse the polarity of it, the other one, the other cam, moves in a different direction, comes around the other switch, touches the little micro switch and switches the actual motor off. Now, as, as default from the factory, they are set up to go maximum and minimum. I actually had to set up mine slightly different. I had to tweak mine a little bit to allow for the right movement. And what I did, I did it manually with just, a, just off a battery straight to the actual in, in here with some wires going on it and I just watched it move and gradually move around. Uh, the way you do it, if you want to adjust, the, the first of all I would do the bottom one first because that's the easiest to do. To, put some power to it, watch it go around to the bottom, the right direction so it hits the micro switch. Now, if that is, if that's not, if that's going around too far, you can undo the screw, lift the gear up very slightly, only a tiny little bit, not much because you don't want to pull it out of the back bit. And you can twist it around, click it around a gear at a time. Bear in mind there's some gears under there, so you ought to be careful. And you just go around a gear, a tooth at a time, till you get it in the right position. Then make sure that one actually moves to the right place. Once you've done that one, then you can actually undo the screw and move this one on top, because that's actually on a little knurled gear. You can't hardly really see it on there. But there is actually a little knurled sort of gear between the two of them, so they're like linked together and they can't move once the screw's tight. Uh, Apart from that, as a matter of fiddling it and getting used to it, but I've, I've actually learned the hard way. I did it all myself. When you take this off, you should be left with two screws in the middle holding this plate in place. And that will still move without any problems, as long as these two screws are tight. Only when you put the top plate on will it actually uh, fasten the, the, the water the sort of water end of it. When, when putting the plate on, another thing to do, make sure you get that bit facing in the right direction which on this case let's have a look it goes on this one it goes that way around and make sure also your motor drive is at the top okay not at the bottom the motor drive is always upright okay so that should help you you've got a cable gland in the end there as well and the nut on the actual actuator should be reasonably tight okay if you look inside the lid You'll see there's a diagram in there explaining all. They usually come with diagrams, and you, you'll better see the way it's actually wired up from inside the lid. Okay. Something else to remember when putting these connections on: make sure you grease the ends so they are loose. Okay. You don't want this to be tight. When I actually put mine on, you can see from here, I can actually lift it right the way up, and it's loose on the bearing. On the wheel bearing, so make sure you've got some good copper slip or something in there which will allow it to twist. Also, make sure it doesn't hit the actual uh, bit of metal it's on. I've done the same with the top one, as you can see up here, it actually twists quite freely on there. So, anyway, that's the uh, just the final bits about it. Hope you're successful. Any problems, give me a call.